Okay, so we have a patient here who had a um, hyperextension injury uh, at work in the altercation and did not get better with conservative treatment, so he has continued pain in the knuckle. So what we're going to do is actually look inside, much like we were doing the knee and the shoulder, we're going to actually look inside the joint without having to even open it. We do that with technology of arthroscopy, which is a fiber optic instrument. We have a little traction of the distended joint. So yeah, a little bit of blood in the joint. So that tells us right away, shouldn't get any blood in there. So, so you see the joint is illuminated. All right, so now we're going to orient things. Now we're seeing a nice big plasma screen. And there is, so this is an inflammation right there, so we're going to record that. Oh, there it is. So this, and there is the market inflammation of the joint. So over here, this is nice and clean. There's a ligament. And when we go on this side, which is what I suspected clinically, this ligament has been partially torn and there is a synovitis there. So I think it's important um, at some point for you to focus on that because I don't think that they're going to be able to see the monitor and this. So at some point, we can actually move the monitor a little bit and you can zoom in on that. So right now we're gonna, so now we've identified. Jose, part three, Jose, part three. Now, now we've done the diagnostic part, now we've gotta do the therapeutic part. We actually are not only so much like an MRI, when you, you, you get an idea, you don't really see it, right? An MRI is a representation of what the pathology of the injury is. Here, we're actually seeing it. Now, this machine is like a rotor rotor. We're going to use our radio frequency also, please. Now, what we're doing is this, this mechanical shave where we're actually aspirating and removing the tissue, but again, without having to open the joint. Take some photos so we can show the patient later and the family and we can show what we found. 
so they understand what was causing the pain for all that time. So I think a lot of people are aware about arthroscopy due to the sports pages, right? They talk about removing chips from somebody's from a pitcher's elbow or a cartilage tear in a football player's knee. That's kind of our point of reference. But truth is, this is stuff that happens every day, people, um, all the time. What we're going to do is now we're removed. You see, you don't see a lot of that red tissue anymore. Now what we're going to do is tighten up the tissue. So we can either open that and put some stitches in the ligament, or we can use a technology called radio frequency where we're going to actually touch and alter the collagen, which is a building block of the capsule. On the other side of what we call the radial side, but it's, it's, that means the problem is much less affected on that side. So when the finger was bent back, the tissue uh, tore. And the effect of that is this redness of synovitis. Actually, on both sides of the pathology, and that's very you know what the term I use is kind of redundant. In other words, this should be more like this part of the ligament, which is more like a drum, right? And then this is just redundant. So this is what a, it's kind of like what an ACL would look like, maybe in the knee, and then this, the knee surgeon would decide, you see, would decide to actually remove it. In, in this case, we don't need to do that. We'll just take the local tissue and it'll be, you know, because, I mean, most of us don't walk on our hands. I say most of us, but I've, I've had a lot of Cirque du Soleil patients. <laughs> so they have special needs. So, so I'm going to remove a lot of this redundant tissue in it and then tighten the... Are you able to see that well enough on a monitor? You might? Mm -hmm. Yeah? Okay. You know, sometimes with, with cameras, it's hard to see. You got a good picture there? We got a good picture there? Okay. Uh, it's all off. all tissue that's getting almost like pinched into the joint. So every time he, I remember when I examined him, he, you know, when he goes to make a fist, it hurts. That's because it's synovium. The joint lining is getting pinched into the joint. So I'm going to remove that redundant part now. You know, the radio frequency. So this is a probe. In fact, I'm, I was a uh, fortunate to be involved in the development of the small, I, I helped them design the probe about, gosh, part four. over 15 years part ago, the four. company, and the, it was a small company, and they sold to a big company, like often happens, and uh, but now I'm still using it 15 years later. So I touch this to the tissue, and then we step on the pedal, and what it does is it 
It works on the cross-linking of the collagen. You can see how different it was than when we first got in there. See, now it's no longer redundant. Back in now. It's kind of amazing. This little joint, and this little joint is now as big as big as a knee, or I believe did a shoulder arthroscopy about an hour ago. But all the joints are the same size on the monitor, right? Mm -hmm. What's different is the size of the tools. So you can see there's a tissue that's torn. Yeah. So it's clouding up and much. Let's get the uh, shader, please. Let's get the camera one. This is the camera head and it's connected to a scope. So it's the same camera head that we use for a large arthroscope, small. Let me see. Uh, yeah, I think it's technical issues in, uh, in arthroscopy, particularly with the smaller cameras. So we were able to uh, identify the pathology and actually address it, fix the problem without having to open. You can see the two little holes, we're not even going to put a stitch in them. And then we're going to splint them in a, what they call the functional position of the hand, let the ligament heal and tighten up. Then we'll do a little bit of hand therapy before you know it, it'll be back at work. The problem here is that these kind of injuries are often, let's just say they're, they're overlooked. They say, oh, it's a sprain. You know, the biggest word we hear from the urgent care centers is sprain, strain. What does that mean? I mean, here we define we have a, a grade two, actually a grade three uh, radial collateral ligament tear at the small finger metacarpal phalangeal joint. That is not something you're going to hear, you know, when you go to the emergency room. It's just, it's just, there isn't that expertise, which is understandable. So one of the things that we try to do with ortho now is get, get a, a better diagnosis, more accurate diagnosis, and then, and then get the person to the right subspecialist. Arthritis, that's the head of the, the metacarpal here. This is the base of, of the phalanx, in this case, the proximal phalanx. And all 
that redundant tissue we had before, you can see, but we tightened it up. So it's like an oblique sheet of ligament. And now we're going to let this heal. Yes. So you can see it's pretty quick. Why? Well, it's a small joint. When there's, if it's a shoulder, it takes more time just because there's more surface area. And in this case, we don't have to. We don't really repair. What we do is we, we, we use this this technology to tighten the tissue. So it's not something you're going to see much because a lot of people just don't do small joint or arthroscopy at a hand. It's just happens to be my area of interest, but certainly I have colleagues. Uh, some of them are some of those people will be arriving in Australia in the next couple of days for a big uh, wrist congress. Some other things will be discussed at that meeting. So we're not even going to put a stitch, we just close this with a little what people refer to as a butterfly bandage. Let's take them out. The biggest problem with these injuries is honestly is lack of education. People don't know where to go, who to talk to, and it's. I had a friend the other day, and he's got a kind of a complex ankle problem. So you know, I found the right the right person who does you know, ankle every day. Part three. And that's who you want to see. Um, you have some questions. <coughs> Okay. Um, how long will it take to heal or recover? It's a good question. It always depends on the severity. This is a little bit more severe ligamentous injury than, than, than I anticipated. So uh, I'm going to keep them in the cast in this position four weeks. We'll put them in a splint today. That's good. Because we want, it, we want the ligament to heal in this position. Because if you let it heal like this, you know, most... Common thing I see in the, people leaving urgent care centers is they put, they're putting a splint with their hand like in a karate chop position. That's really terrible because you can't flex. You've got to get the knuckles down. And I mean, that can explain why, but it's a little bit technical. But the important thing is that you have to be immobilized the right way. And we are going to. Uh, Next week, we'll, this is a post-op splint. Next week, we'll put them in a fiberglass cast. And we can put them in one that allows them to even shower with it on, get in a pool, maybe even go to the beach. It's just I just want to hold that, that joint in a certain position. And that'll be on about four weeks. Um, does the patient need physical therapy? A little bit. It's more what we call occupational therapy, which is what... Most hand surgery in the U.S. is done by occupational, not physical therapists. Although occasionally it can be. So it's, it'll, be, it'll be hand therapy is really the, the appropriate term because it's very important that you, that you need a specialist for this kind of procedure and then you need a specialist to do the rehab. It's not somebody who's going to be doing rehab on back or knees or, or uh, you know, ankles. Do you have a little more cast padding? You know what? I think we're good, actually. Yeah. Thank you. Mm -hmm. And then, what is the treatment for pain? There's not much pain with this. You saw it. It's two little holes. So, I don't know. Kate handles all the pain. <laughs> <laughs> we'll give them a mild narcotic just for a few days. Um, but if they don't need it, they don't have to take it. It's just in case. Yeah. Pain's a very individual thing. So, so for those who don't often understand how medical care is you know, going in this, in this country. We, we uh, depend a lot on, on physician assistance, so Kate, and Kate is an expert only in upper limb. I mean, that's what her specialty is as an orthopedic PA. And we, uh, we depend a lot on our orthopedic PA colleagues in the ortho now centers. Because you can't have a hand surgeon, a foot surgeon, a spine surgeon, a knee surgeon all sitting in an ortho now waiting for that particular injury 
to begin with, most injuries don't need surgery, fortunately. So, so a lot of times, uh, if I'm out of the country, I mean, uh, Kate sees, sees a lot of the patients, and, um, and then when we're when we do surgery like today, we, we do it together. We have from, uh, from FIU, we have a, a student, right? A, a, a PA student who was here a few minutes ago and had to, had to attend to something personal. Um, but that person will um, spend a month with us basically learning. Okay, please. Thank you. We're going to hope we need to apply to Harden. The important thing is now we make a fist. So even, even post-operative, we want him to make a fist to use his hand. But we want to hold that, that joint in the right position because that ligament runs obliquely. We want it to scar down and heal just in the right amount of tension. Any other questions? No. Perfect. So I hope, uh, hope, hope someone learned something and uh, happy to share. Thanks.